Here follows some of the big questions which have tormented humanity for a long time. This film will present a scheme that will solve some of them and give useful clues to how to solve the rest of them. In other words, this new scheme you will be presented with here is the future. What is this thing called Bane, Buddha? What is this thing called comparison that causes so many problems, Louts? This thing called music, why does it affect me, Pythagoras? What is this thing called logic, Aristotle? How does our feelings work, Jesus? What is the relation between our mind and the rest of the world, Descartes? Is our mind empty at birth, Locke? How are our brains hardwired, Hume? Will extraterrestrials have morals and how will they differ from us in morals, Kant? Is history moving towards a goal, Hegel? What is this thing called will that makes flesh move, Skip and hate hour? What is this thing called language, Wittgenstein? Are we alone as individuals, Sartre? How do we create intelligence and how will it behave, Asimov? All of these questions will be answered fully here or will be almost answered here. Hopefully this theory will also lead us to solve many mysteries of physics, mathematics and several other fields. So let's get started. In our language there are words referring to objects and phenomena and we all want these to resemble the objects and phenomena we find around us as good as possible. For an example we have the word tree or mouse and these should in our understanding of these words should be such that they match the trees and mouses we find in nature. However there are some words that refer to phenomena we cannot experience with our senses. We cannot feel the digit free, we cannot smell the object history and we cannot see a feeling, but nearly everybody will say that these phenomena exists. So this puts us to the question, how are we sure that we are talking about the right thing when we cannot examine these phenomena with our senses? The answer is we can't. This film will present to you some phenomena that almost matches some of the commonly used words in the language but they do not match perfectly so some words will have to be redefined. So we start with mapping the brain. One big previous mistake that has been made when trying to explain how the brain processes information is the concentration the sight sense has represented for the senses. Instead we shall here see that there is one sense that takes a special position in our mind and it is not our sight. It is our feel sense. We will separate the feel sense from the others in respect to its cognitive role in our minds. What makes flesh move? This is if you will this is the riddle of all life. Generally it is fear of pain that makes flesh move, it might be the pain of hunger or it might be some more direct pain. This is what drives men and animals to do something rather than nothing. So understanding this thing, called motivation is a key issue when trying to understand the concept of life and to do so we must understand pain better. Positive feelings are another weaker source of motivation. But generally we can say that motivation comes from fleeing pain and seeking positive emotions. What we also can see is that motivation does not consist of any particular units that it can be divided into, so something else must be responsible for it. As we shall see it is important to separate phenomena that are dividable into pieces from phenomena that are not. If you have time you can pause this movie at the next text and see which of the following phenomena are dividable into pieces. Maybe these words seem like pretty random words and they are. However, they have one thing in common, they are all connected to mental processes. Now we will sort these words into three categories. The first category is called units and consists of a phenomena that can be divided into smaller things. The second category we will call relation and it will consist of the relations between units. 
The third category will be called pattern and will consist of emergent phenomena. When we sort the words or phenomena into these categories, we get this. However, this does not give us much yet, so we divide these groups into three levels, and then we get this, and now we have come somewhere. We also add definitions of the phenomena. Actually, we now have a very potent map of our consciousness which will answer many questions. If we accept it and from it we can also derive a helpful law. You may wonder why you should accept these new definitions of the words and for now you will only get the answer that they are potent. If you accept them a lot of questions will simply be answered. Now here we can see a clear pattern and a pattern is always regulated by a law. The law working here can be defined in the following words. Several units of whatever sort must always have a relation to each other and from the units together with a relation a pattern always emerges. 5. The level of feelings and motivation. Units, nerve impulses equals the units that must be producing pain or joyful feelings. Relation, experience equals different nerve impulses must give a sensation of experience when compared. The experience is the foundation of all feelings which grows more complex as time goes by. Emergent pattern motivation equals what makes us do something rather than nothing. 6. The information handling level. Units, impressions equals information from our senses except our feel sense. Relation, scales equals the comparison of impressions must result in scales. Bigger, smaller, higher, lower, and so on. Emergent pattern, categories equals the storage structure of the brain. The grid that designates certain objects to certain parts of the brain. 7. The thinking level units, symbols, words equals the recollection of experiences in a broad sense relation, grammar equals what gives any meaning to a sequence of symbols emergent pattern, thoughts equals meaningful combinations of symbols and grammar. The three levels you just saw is what makes up our minds. As you can see our minds are built up by the same nine phenomena you were shown in the beginning of the film. However, there are complicated feedback loops within the scheme which will take a lot of research to exactly describe. Now that we have this law and know how it works we will look broader and see what other phenomena in the universe that fit into it. First we look at the strange phenomena music and as we can see it is perfectly structured by the law. We have the units, we have the relation and the emergent pattern. Now you have been shown all the 10 levels that has been discovered so far. Here they are again, together. Now we have covered just about every phenomena in the universe. Research is still being made on the universal levels to find their exact structure, but the law seems useful even on the physical level. So now we go back to the questions to see how many we can answer. What is this thing called pain? Buddha. Although the question still can't be fully answered, we now have the context of pain so that we may understand it better. The context is to be found in level 4. What is this thing called comparison that causes so many problems? Leo C. Comparison is as an intellectual tool in level 6 and as an emotional tool in level 5. 
This thing called music, why does it affect me? Pythagoras. The key to answering this question can be found in level 4. What is this thing called logic? Aristotle. Logic and universal grammar are closely linked together according to Wittgenstein. The context of logic and grammar can be found in level 7 and 1. How does our feelings work? Jesus. How they appear can be explained by level 4 but how they work exactly will take more research. What is the relation between our mind and the rest of the world? Discards. As we can see consciousness is very dependent on our feel sense which stretches out through our body so there is no real separation between our minds and the physical world. How are our brains hardwired? Hume. The answer to this is found in level 5, 6, and 7 but more research is needed to understand the feedback in the system. Will extraterrestrials have morals and how will they differ from us in morals? Can't. They will have the same morals as us because their intelligence must be structured in the same way. Is history moving towards a goal? Hegel. We can conclude that history is developing levels from previous levels and if there is a first level there should also be a last level. However we can understand the next level no more than a rock can grasp the concept of life. What is this thing called will that makes flesh move? Schopenhauer. Will is another word for motivation and we see how it is constructed in level 5. What is this thing called language? Wittgenstein. Language is an emergent pattern which consists of symbols and grammar. We can study it in level 6. Are we alone as individuals? Sartre. Definitely not. Level 8, 9 and 10 clearly shows how intertwined our minds are. There is simply no escape from the influence of others. Even our language that define our thoughts is a collective creation. How do we create intelligence and how will it behave? Asimov, we must only find out what defines a nerve impulse and replicate it and have some sort of storage where the impulses can be compared to each other. These are some of the questions that the scheme provides answer to or important information about. There are lots more discoveries to be made, especially regarding the universal levels. There is a lot to be said about this new perspective, so if you are interested, or have questions, or want to cooperate, please let us know. Thank you for watching.